Before we get into today's video, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody, anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Hope everybody is doing great. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about a case slash situation that happened with a young woman named Mackenzie Sharilla. Now, researching this and hearing about this, and this situation actually happened last year, it brings back so many familiar memories from my youth from being a teenager or you know those younger years and toxic relationships and toxic actions and that fighting back and forth with your boyfriend you know constantly and all of that and unfortunately a lot of people that live this type of lifestyle that we're going to be talking about end up in not so great situation. So before we get into the story, I did want to tell you guys, if you don't already know, hi, my name is Christina. I do have a second channel, which is casually Christina. We do things more casually over there. I also have a Patreon. My Patreon is for 18 and up over there. We talk about more personal story times. We go live over there and I have a $2 tier over there uh, where all of the true crime stuff that can't go onto YouTube due to their terms and policies. That goes under my $2 tier over on Patreon. I also have a Snapchat, an Instagram, a Facebook, a like to know it page where you can find like all of my favorite makeup items and clothing items and things that I wear and stuff that you guys see in my house. All of those links are down in the description box if you wanna come and check me out. So let's talk about Little Miss Mackenzie. In July of 2022, just last year, Mackenzie Sharilla was 17 years old and living in Strongsville, Ohio. Her parents are Natalie Sharilla and John Sharilla. Mackenzie was dating a man named Dominic Russo, who was 20 years old, and they had been dating for about three to four years. Dominic was a gifted athlete and was loved by so many people. He had a lot of friends. He was very close with his siblings and his mother, and he just lit up a room and people really loved to be around him. Dominique's sister even said that Dominique loved singing and writing music and had just started his own clothing line. On July 31st of 2022, Mackenzie and Dominique's friend, Davian Flanagan, who was 19 years old, were hanging out and smoking green together in Mackenzie's car. Dominique and Davion were really good friends and they enjoyed making music together and just hanging out. Davion was adopted at the age of eight years old with his two younger biological sisters by his parents, Scott and Jamie. And Davion had dreams of going to barber school and opening up his own shop one day. On this particular night in July of 2022, Davion was just hoping to get a ride home from his friends. But then at 5.30 a.m., the car that Mackenzie was driving accelerated to 100 miles per hour and crashed into a building. When it crashed into this building, it ended up taking the lives of Dominic and Davion instantly. They passed away on impact. A good Samaritan was driving by sometime later and saw the car crash into a building when they called 911. When paramedics got there, this is when they realized that the two guys had passed on, but that Mackenzie, who was in the driver's seat, was unconscious, but she still had a pulse. They rushed Mackenzie to the hospital and she was immediately put into surgery. Now, when you see this car, it is horrifying to see this car completely mangled up like this. It is a miracle that Mackenzie even survived. Now, when investigators were looking at the car, they saw that on the gas pedal was literally a gold like slipper that she was wearing that night was still stuck to the gas pedal. And when they searched Mackenzie, they found 
magic mushrooms, as well as a digital scale in her pocket. Three months later, on November 4th, to Mackenzie's surprise, the police showed up and arrested her for multiple counts of murder. Mackenzie had a four day bench trial, no jury, just a judge. So everything was left up to the judge, guilty, not guilty, sentencing, everything is relying now on this one person. When the prosecution brought their case against Mackenzie, this is when they said that Mackenzie and her boyfriend, Dominic, argued all the time. Young, toxic love, fighting. The prosecution even said that not long before the car accident, Mackenzie had even threatened to crash the car with Dominic in it and kill them both. And Dominic's brother actually testified to hearing her say that. However, Mackenzie and the defense's side claimed that she did not do this on purpose. She blacked out. She don't remember what happened. And she actually has some sort of medical condition that makes her pass out. And she didn't do this on purpose and she would never do this on purpose. But then the very eerie video of the car speeding down the road right before the crash was played in court. A certified forensic mechanic would testify that after they looked into the computer system of Mackenzie's car, that just seconds before the crash, the car accelerated to full speed. So basically what he's saying is that before they crashed, whoever was driving it hit the gas and pushed it all the way down and never ever let off of the gas. Didn't stop, didn't brake, didn't slow down, pedal to the floorboard, until they ran into the building. And during the trial, the prosecution showed two different incidences that they believed showed how violent McKenzie could be in the relationship. The prosecution then went into more detail about this alleged threat that she made to her boyfriend about wrecking the car. On July 17th of 2022, the two of them were going down the interstate when allegedly she began to speed up the car and threatened him to crash the car. This is when Dominic allegedly called his mother and was telling her what was going on and wanted them to come and get him. Another person that was on the phone heard Mackenzie say, I will crash this car right now. When the friend pulled up to pick up Dominic, he found Mackenzie's car pulled over on the side of the road with the passenger side door open. The friend said that they saw her striking Dominic with both of her hands, like she was just hitting him, wailing on him. And this is when he was able to get out of the car and get into the car with his friend. During another argument in July of 2022, Dominic recorded Mackenzie making threats towards him. Videos from his cell phone show that they got into an altercation and Mackenzie was heard repeatedly degrading him, threatening him and threatening to damage his property. She threatened to key his car and to break off his door handle. She verbally counted down multiple times to force him to let her in. And she allegedly said, you're gonna come open this door right now or there's gonna be a serious effing problem. At this point, Dominic stopped recording and called his mother for help. Now, before we go any further, as a mother myself, and some of y'all have probably dealt with these types of things, oh my gosh, my heart goes out to you, I cannot imagine. I cannot imagine what Dominic's mother was feeling at this point, because obviously he cared about her. He kept going back. It's that toxic, you know, that back and forth, like he's going back to her. It's this and that and the threats and that, 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 and he's calling his mom and she's coming to get him. And she's probably saying, well, you know, one day she's going to do something and golly, like, Oh, then the prosecution pointed out a bunch of like strange things that McKenzie did after the fatal crash. One of the things that she did was when Dominic's like online obituary went up, she flooded it with photos of the two of them together, which listen, I know that like if somebody passes on or it's a birthday or something, you know, like on Facebook, people post photos of the birthday person and them together or whatever, but she's literally the one that was driving the car that killed this young man. And she went and flooded his obituary 
with photos of them two together. The prosecution then showed the judge and the people in the courtroom some messages that Mackenzie and allegedly her mom sent a modeling agency trying to get herself a modeling job while she was still in the hospital. You got, I want y'all to think about this. She done drove the car, killed, whether she wants to say it was unintentional or not. She, she killed her boyfriend of three plus years, their friend who was just an innocent bystander that wanted to get a ride home. She's in the hospital and she's applying for modeling jobs. The prosecution also showed photos from where Mackenzie was out with her friends on Halloween. So this happened in July, okay? August, September, October. I know she's young, but come on. Out in Halloween, celebrating with her friends. They even showed where she went to a concert while she was still in her wheelchair. She had her friends come and take her to the concert. Now, I know some people would say, and Mackenzie's mom did try to say this later, and we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna get there too, that some people would say, yes, but she had a hard time. She needed to get out of the house. I don't really know if that's the way. I saw a video of a TikTok that she made. Again, this is post the murder or the killing of her boyfriend of three plus years where she was like getting dressed up for Halloween with her friend. I'll play it for you guys here in a second. But before she puts her hand over the camera, she looks normal. When she takes her hand off of the camera, to me, she looks high, like she's drinking or smoking. Imagine what the family members of these two young men were thinking if they saw all of this. The prosecution also showed a TikTok TikTok video where she was bragging about her substance abuse. Who she actually was is directly um, contradictory to what is painted by the letters submitted on behalf of her today. I'm not even cool. I'm just one of those girls that can do a lot of drugs and not die. Mackenzie was ultimately found guilty of all of the charges. The judge referred to Mackenzie as hell on wheels when she read the verdict. And at this point, I would like to comment specifically on Exhibit 802, the crash video. This is the type of evidence you can never unsee. You can never forget the visual or audio of this exhibit. It is chilling and tragic. As you review that exhibit, you know that you are watching the oncoming deaths of two people, and there is nothing that will stop it. The video clearly shows the purpose and intent of the defendant. She chose a course of death and destruction that day. Exhibit 802 crystallizes the deadly decision-making of the defendant. She morphs from a responsible driver to literal hell on wheels as she makes her way down the street. Mackenzie alone made the decision to drive the car, to drive an obscure route, a route she visited a few days before, and a route not routinely taken by her. Mackenzie alone chose the time to make the drive, early in the morning, when any reasonable person would expect a few people would be nearby to witness it or offer life-saving assistance. Mackenzie alone decided to push the pedal to the floor and demand the ultimate speed of that vehicle to 90 to 100 miles per hour. She alone decided what was to be. Mackenzie decided death was the ultimate goal that day, and she alone made that decision for Dominic and Debian, and she continuously acted in a manner to achieve her purpose. Whether or not she intended to also kill herself is a matter of speculation that have no relevance to the weighing of the evidence in this case. The totality of the evidence clearly demonstrates that Mackenzie Shirilla acted purposely and intentionally in the early morning hours of July 31st, 2022, her purpose was to kill Dominic Crusoe in the Carol Flanagan. No reasonable fact finder could view the totality of this evidence in this case and come to any other conclusion. Her actions were controlled, methodical, deliberate, intentional, and purposeful. This was not reckless driving. This was murder. Court renders the following verdicts. Count one. The court, having had count one tried to a pursuant to waiver, finds the defendant, Mackenzie Shirilla, guilty of murder to win Dominic Russo in violation of the Vice Code section 2903.02a is charged in count one. Count two. The court, having had count two tried to a pursuant to waiver, finds the defendant, Mackenzie Shirilla, guilty of murder to win Davion Flanagan violation of a revised code section 2903.02a is charged in count two of the indictment. And at McKenzie's sentencing hearing, McKenzie 
her mom, Dominic's family, and Davion's family all gave statements. Now, her mother gave a statement. I am so trying to show grace because it's like, you just never... I don't know. I don't want to say you never know how you're going to react in that situation because you don't. And, and I never will in the name of Jesus. I will never know how that feels and neither will anybody watching this ever, ever, ever in the name of Jesus will never know what that feels like. However, I want y'all to watch this. It's bizarre. It's bizarre the way she addresses them. It's to me when I watched it, I thought this girl Mackenzie got away with everything in life. Her mother and her family probably cleaned up all of her messes. And that might be part of the reason why she is the way she is. Check this out. Can you start with your name? My name is Natalie Shavrilla. Um, I just want to say, am I allowed to address them at all? Sure. I just want to say to the families that I'm broken, sad, and lost, and my heart hurts for everyone. Okay? Davion was her new friend, and Dom was the love of her life, and he was part of our family. Okay? I'm just so sorry that this happened and we're heartbroken. Okay? And then, Your Honor, this was a terrible, tragic nightmare accident to have happened that she has no memory of, and she will never emotionally or physically recover of it, recover from it. Um, she almost died too. And we're asking that you please not run the sentence as consecutive. He was family and we all loved each other. At Halloween, for three months after the accident, she would only wear his clothes. She would only eat the snacks he ate. She would only listen to the music he wrote, okay? She was laying in bed for three months crying. There was a shrine of him next to her with photos and things that he liked and this flower that lights up that he got her because he wanted it to be fresh and alive forever. It's like a little Beauty and the Beast flower. Okay, she's got this shrine of him next to her. So she was crying for three months. So her friends asked if she wanted to go out trick-or-treating or to Halloween, and it was at OU. And she didn't even want to go. She said, I don't know, should I go? She couldn't even walk yet, barely. So I told her, I said, baby, please go. It's Halloween. You've been laying for three months crying, only listening to his music. Please go have just a moment of fun, a moment of fun. So we told her to go. My husband drove her. I brought her back home. She just needed a second of fun from losing her whole world, her whole world. So that was us. We told her to go. And that concert she went to with Dom's cousin, Abby, they picked her up. They brought her there. That was Dom, Mackenzie and Dom and Abby all decided to go to this concert together while they were in the hospital. That was for Dom. Everything she did after the accident was either in honor of him, to be close to him, or just to be by him any way that she can. She's like devastated and tragic. He was the air that she breathes, okay? And they went with his cousin, we spent all kinds of time with him after the accident. Um, what was the other thing? I'm hearing an awful lot about your daughter. I'm not hearing very much about the two dead people. Dominic, okay, I'm asking you for a leniency because this was a tragic accident that she does not remember. And Don, Davion, we don't, I, he's a new friend. And I'm so sorry. What does that mean? His life is worthless? No, 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 no. God, no, not at all. They all, they all loved each other. They all spent every day together. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know too much for him. isn't that part of the problem, Mrs. Shrill? Sorry? Isn't that part of the problem, that they all trusted each other? Isn't that part of... It's not a problem at all. It's, it was it's wonderful. It's a problem of how they all ended up in the car together and two of them ended up dead. I understand. I understand what it looks like. I'm, I'm, I'm saying that it was a tragic accident. She would never. Well, we're going to have to disagree on. I understand. That. Right, and I respect your position, but you disagree with me. I understand, but anyway, that's it. I just wanted to address those. We told her to go to those things, and then she did go with Dom's family. So look at that. Don't look at it with the look at that. Look on that with different eyes if you can, please. This is that. Those things are not relevant. Not at, not at all. Not at all. No. Not at all. But she's a good, if you, would, if you would have a moment, all you would need is five minutes of a conversation to have with her to learn who she is. Just that you would just need five minutes to learn who she is and what she's capable of not doing and doing. And you would see for yourself. Thank That's you. all. I'm so sorry, guys. Thank you. I'm sorry. Davion's family gave their statements as well. And just want to remind you guys, like I told you on the beginning of the video, he was adopted along with his siblings and they're all crushed. Uh, Your Honor, my name is Jamie Flanagan. 
I am the mother of the victim, Davion Flanagan. I want to share a small part of what we lost on 721, I'm sorry, 731, 2022. My son, Davion, is and always will be so much more than cargo. He was precious. He was an amazing soul with a heart of gold. He gave to the world what we, he wanted most in his own life, love. The kind of love that would rescue a friend in the middle of the night, no questions asked. The kind that would protect others and honor them. He made friends easily with his infectious smile. He was a gifted athlete. He had plans to go to barber school and open his own shop. My son did not have a clique of friends, but instead was a friend to all. He would go out of his way to show love and kindness to others, including those that were often cast aside by society, the less fortunate, the developmentally challenged, the hurting, and the unvalued. Devion made sure that everyone that crossed his path knew that he truly saw them, that he valued them, and that they were worth his time. Now, and then Dominic's family got up there, and I found his mother's statement incredible incredibly powerful. Y'all listen to this. I'm Christine Russo, I'm Dominic's mother. No one wanted this to be a murder or to punish Mackenzie Shirilla for this accident. But this was not a car accident. The evidence and science proved that Mackenzie Shirilla murdered my son, Dominic, as well as Davion. There's no fix put in in this case, as the Shirillas would like to proclaim. I want to thank Strongsville Police Department and the state of Ohio for seeking the truth behind this crash. Thanks to them, we all know what happened in that car that day. What we don't know is why. I wish I could change this every day. I lost three children in that crash. Not a minute goes by each day that I don't think about my son, as well as Davion. My heart is forever broken. The cries heard from the Shrilla family and friends after the verdict are nothing more than a lack of remorse. Mackenzie Shirilla had a choice. Dom and Davion did not. We are all left here to mourn. But what Dave, Tom, and Nick, and Davion lost can never be remedied in any way or by any particular sentence. July 31st, 2022, I called Mackenzie's mother hysterical with the loss of my son and Davion. I knew Mackenzie was in the hospital and the first statement said to me was, oh, please don't listen to what everyone's saying on Facebook. Yeah, my son is dead, his friend is dead, and I'm checking on yours. Yet social media is what's important. Social media has made a game out of the life of Mackenzie and is making a game out of this heart-wrenching tragedy. No one can imagine the pain of losing a child. Mackenzie was then sentenced to two 15 to life concurrent sentences. The difficulty for sentencing today, honestly, is whether or not I believe you should get consecutive sentences. I'm troubled that should I give you a concurrent sentence that people will believe that somehow I'm being disrespectful to one of the victims. And on the other hand, I have to weigh the punishment. There's a very good likelihood, Mackenzie, that you will spend the rest of your life in prison. That won't be up to me. That will be up to the parole board, and that will be up to you to a great extent. I understand that the pain in this room wants me to impose the harshest sentence, but I don't believe that would be the appropriate sentence because I do believe that Mackenzie will not be out in 15 years. So she's sentenced on count two, the murder of Davion Flanagan, 15 years to life. She's sentenced on count one, the murder of Dominic Russo, 15 years to life. 
to be served concurrent to each other with credit for time served. I'll waive fines, fees, and costs, and your appellate counsel will be assigned. And she will not be eligible for parole until 2037. And you guys, y'all heard me say this before, that's a light sentence. Now, from what I understand, it was what the judge could give her because she was technically 17 when this happened. And even when you're adjudicated as an adult, there are just certain things. You, you can't give the death penalty to a, a child, da, 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 da. But she could be eligible for parole in 15 years. And mind you, this happened when she was 17. She could literally be out in her 30s. If she gets out that early, which seems so early for what, especially the way that she acted afterwards. I feel like there is some, I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professional, go do your own research, form your own opinions. I feel like there's some personality traits or disorders there that, um, makes it where you don't feel there's no remorse because of the things that she was doing even while she was in the hospital and then afterwards. And that's scary to me. People that don't care are scary and sometimes dangerous. So we will see. But if she gets out in 15 years, I hope it's only because she's a changed woman and she's getting ready to come out and, and have a ripple effect of positivity on the world. Otherwise, and I just can't imagine like the families of these two boys I always think about this when I think about these cases. I think about Christmases, right? Because we're getting ready to have Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's coming up here and Christmas. And, and being with my family is the most important thing all the time, but especially during the holidays because I get to be with all of them. You get to cook the food and everybody's happy. Everybody's in a good mood. And then to have one of your babies missing. That's just like, like Dominic's mother said, and like she said, I, I, unless you've been in that situation, you really don't know. But it just seems like a wound that just doesn't, it doesn't ever really heal. People, it seems like people learn how to live, but it never goes away. And I just don't understand how this girl is so cold or was so cold. And I don't know. To hear her mom tell it, she cried and cried and cried, but I actually just don't know if I believe it. And I guess it's really not for me to believe, but that was her sentence, 15 years to life. If she gets out in 15 years, mm -mm -mm. it's nothing. It's nothing. But those are my opinions. You guys, oh, God bless all of our children. I love you guys. I hope you guys have a great week and I'll see y'all in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.